Hello everyone and welcome to uh, NX A to Z webinar. Today we're going to talk about how to create um, associative 1 and 2D finite element models in NX Advanced Simulation. So here we have a uh, assembly model and it's a couple of plates and then uh, some structural tubing. Um, and this is you know, a good candidate for a 1 and 2D FEA, so we do 1D beam elements for these tubes and then some 2D elements for the plates. <clears throat> and we want to make a finite element model that's going to adjust um, automatically should you know the length of these pieces change or even the size of them change and whatnot. So today we're going to go over how to do that. So the key to the whole thing is using sketches. Um, and you can do this with regular curves, but it's more difficult because there are less options for constraining curves than there are for constraining sketches. <clears throat> so what we need to do is we need to put a sketch, um, basically in the in a plane that is the center of these tubes, and then uh, draw a line within the sketch for each tube. So the first step is the plane. And if we just center the plane here, oh, you know, I forgot a step here. We need linked bodies. So in advanced simulation, <coughs> you always want to create an idealized part, and you want to create linked bodies. So we enter advanced simulation, new find an element model in simulation, and we do want to create an idealized part. Uh, bodies to use all visible and this is just going to dump us right into the simulation model or the simulation file and this is going to be a you know, I guess theoretically a NAS strand structural analysis okay so now we got to go back into the idealized part and this is just a little note saying that the best way to do this is to make linked bodies because until you make a linked body you can't modify the geometry meaning that if you were doing a 3D FEA you wouldn't be able to you know, do any geometry abstraction until you did linked bodies. But even for the 1D FEA, you still want to do linked bodies because you have a lot more control. So we're going to go back into modeling. Alright, so what is the idealized part file? Well, it's just an assembly file, and the original model was brought in. So that's all this is. The original file we were working with was already an assembly, so now I've just got one step up above that and this is called the idealized part. So we're going to make link bodies of everything and then we're going to turn off the original assembly. So now we're just looking at linked bodies and change the color so that I don't get the different components confused. Strong olive is one of my favorites for sure. Look at that. Okay, now we can make the sketch. <clears throat> so we're just going to center it between those two planes. Stretch it out a little bit. Alright, and that's where we're going to start putting our 1D curves. So we'll just do it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of roughly sketch this thing So I'm trying deliberately to not connect everything because I want this to be 
constrain in a very specific way, and I just have a feeling that if I just let the auto constraints do whatever they're going to do, it's just not going to work out the way I want. And I also don't want auto dimensioning. I don't want auto dimensioning turned on. And where is that? Okay. So what I've got here is these short little lines here are just going to be rigid elements just to account for the thickness of these tubes. And then the rest of these lines are going to be beam elements when we get into the finite element model. So what I want to do is I just want to position um, you know, these endpoints at the edges of these tubes. So that would just be a point on curve and then a midpoint, and that one's done. And then point on curve, midpoint, get rid of that, get rid of that. Uh, these in here are a little trickier, so I'll get these other ones out of the way first. little trick here if you uh, hold down control when you're doing constraints um, if you hold down control while you select when you're doing constraints then whatever you selected will stay selected so you can keep adding constraints without having to reselect <clears throat> alright so we have basically got the the vertical tubes are done. Now we got to get these tubes in the middle. And I think the best way to do that is to let's see here. Let's go right here. If we just draw a couple of lines. Okay. So we're just about there. This one's got a couple of inferred constraints. So now we just connect those.
Okay, so that's it. Fully constrained and no dimensions. So basically, any of the sizes um, or the lengths of these components change, this sketch will automatically update to account for those changes. So now we have, you know, basically a, a fully associative adjustable sketch here. <coughs> Um, and if just to demonstrate now obviously if you know one of these tubes gets changed from a tube to an I-beam then uh, you know our sketch probably isn't going to update because the edges that we used um, are uh, are just going to be gone. So, <clears throat> but there's really not much you can do about that. All right, so we extend that out. You know that changes. If we moved this over, pieces in the middle would change. Um, you get the idea. Okay, so the next step then is 2D. The 2D um, finite element model geometry. <coughs> And that's the, you know, these would be 2D meshes most likely. So for that, what you want to do is you want to extract this face. Okay, and then you also need an imprint of this uh, tube on this face so you can do a spider element to connect the two. So that would be divide face. So So I was selecting the face of the plate which I had already used to do the extract face and so then I got errors Alright, so now if you jump into your finite element model, before I do that I'm going to hide those tubes and I'll show you why in a minute. And uh, I'm going to hide this too. Those could all be moved to different layers as well, but I'm just going to hide them. Okay, so now we get into advanced simulation and show the FEM file. And we want to edit the geometry. Edit the fem file, edit bodies to use. 
I want to do all visible because you can see down here the only bodies that are visible are the faces I extracted and then I also want curves I guess I need sketch curves alright and that's it that's all I've got in my fem file now Okay, so the only other thing you need to do here is you need to create mesh points and the reason you need to create mesh points is because if you have two meshes that share a point, if you don't have a mesh point there, you'll end up with a duplicate node. So. So by having these mesh points here, and all these lines are going to be in different meshes, right? And uh, having these mesh points here will just ensure that the nodes at these points are shared, which is what I want because I want these all these meshes to be connected. And down here, I'm going to have the mesh for the Two, which is going to be a 1D element, and then I'm going to have the spider element, and they'll share that node. So I've got my mesh points, so then I could just create some meshes. So there you go. Now you've got a fully associative 1 and 2D finite element model that will automatically adjust to the change in size and length of the tubes and also any sort of change in shape <coughs> on those plates. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.